Go ahead. OK. Are we on? Yeah. All right. So anyway, we're talking about half-life. And the definition of half-life is up here. Now, I was going to derive it over there on the board, but I'll just do it over here uh, so that we all, including on the camera, can see what's going on. So this is the equation, the integrated rate law, for a first order reaction. You know, I want you to ignore what I have over on the left. I'll just go through this with you a little bit faster than what I uh, had intended to here intentionally. If this is true, at the half-life, as long as it takes to get half of the original uh, reactant to get used up, uh, that's the point at which the new concentration equals one half of what it was at the beginning. So this term right here is now going to be ln of A0 over 2. That's what one half A0 is. Yes? First order is So uh, that's equal to, now over on this side, uh, there's nothing that has changed because uh, k is still the same. The time is just still moving on and then plus ln, the a0 was what it, the concentration was at the beginning. Okay, now what do you remember about natural log of a quantity that looks like this? Can you expand it? Yeah, subtract. Yeah, it could be natural log of this minus log of two, right? So I'm gonna just do that. And after I'm done writing that, it'll be clear why I'm doing it. If it's not before then. Well, you don't have to write this. Nah, you don't have to. You just derive Yeah. Okay. Is that all too crammed together? Or can you read that? What do you see? Is there anything that can be cleaned up? Uh, I'm not sure. LN. The ln of a zero. You have one on that side and one on that side, and uh, if you subtract both sides by ln of a0, it's gone from both sides. That means that we're down to negative natural log of 2 equals negative kt. And we're trying to solve for that thing right there. The half-life is an amount of time, remember? So uh, just rearrange this thing. t, 1 half, that little 1 half uh, is the symbol for half-life, equals natural log of 2 over k. Put a box around that and tell it right down for yourself that this is the half-life reaction or uh, equation for a first order reaction. So now is k a variable? Nope, k is a constant. So I derived that from the first order uh, integrated rate law. And I got what the half-life is when the reaction is of first order. OK, now we're going to do a little class participation. This, from Jennifer's row over, this half of the room, would you derive the half-life uh, equation for zero order? You're my zero group. How's that for your self-esteem? Over here, uh, would you, in this half of the room, find the equation for the half-life for second order? You guys are number two. Ooh. So I want you, and you go ahead and collaborate because I want you as a group to come up with a equation that you can all agree on, and then I'm going to have somebody from your group come up and put it up on the board. Okay? So I'll do. Um, insert blank page. First order. It was c one half. have all day. Let's get going. Talk, work, collaborate. Okay, so this is what I got. <laughs> Thank you. So again, if you're kind of stuck, remember that, yeah, half-life is equal to, or that equals one-half A0. Thank you.
I'm not sure if you're allowed to just sit that far and maybe go to the view where you are you allowed? Wait, you know how for uh, first order you put the one half on the inside of the bracket? Of A? Yeah, I mean A zero over two. Can you take that out? It would be the same thing, right? What do you mean take it out? Like, this would be the same thing as concentration over A over 2K. Oh, yeah, 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 you can do that. Yep. Same thing. So that's this, right? Okay. I was thinking, you. It should be simpler than that. <laughs> All right, let's go. I only have a certain amount of time here. You can use a different color if you want to. Something without any eight. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm not sure. Being wrong is part of learning time. Let's see if he's trustworthy. Bruh. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? <laughs> uh, it's not as easy as it looks. We do have other things to do here, Mina. I'm getting there. <laughs> I forgot what they did for the second step of your derivation. Oh, okay. Are you supposed to buy everything like this? Did you get any success? Yeah, I'm consistently getting it out. When you say half wave A equals half A naught, the concentration, that's what the brackets are is concentration. Molarity. Okay, now, do you trust the folks on the other side of the room? No? no? Okay, if you don't, then you have to derive the other one yourself. I do. I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can just tell us if they're right. Well, let us see if we can notice a pattern. What do you see as common, no matter what the order is, what's in common for all these half-life expressions? You have K on the bottom every time. Do you remember what K tells you? K is the rate constant. Really, it tells you how fast the reaction is going. If you have a big K, does that mean it's fast or slow? It means it's a steep slope and it's a fast reaction. Tell me about the half-life if K is big. It means your denominator is big. That means that T one half is small. What does it mean to have a small time? It go. It get. It goes from fifty grams to twenty-five grams quickly, right? If the time is small, that means it goes fast. So that's what uh, this half-life means, is the smaller the half-life, the faster the reaction. That's important to recognize. And the higher the K value, the faster the reaction, because half-life is going to be small. Now, what else do you notice is different about all three of these? Something that really strikes out is, or stands out is different. Well, only one of them has an L. but something else, though. The form of A and the concentration. The concentration is absent from this one. It's in the numerator here, and it's in the denominator there. So I just want to alert you to um, this is something that, uh, that makes these orders much different from each other. First order does not depend on the concentration at the beginning of the half-life. Every half-life is the same interval, because that's a constant and that's a constant. So first order means all the half-lives are the same. This term is not constant, because after the first half-life, let's say you start with 100 grams of reactant. And then half-life, it goes down to 50 grams. Now, this next half-life, you're starting at 50 grams, and it's going down to 25. So your A0 does change at the beginning of the half-life, and from the, the, the next half-life, it starts where the first half-life ended. That's kind of a weird concept, I know. But what happens is this number goes down. Uh, every half-life, that number gets cut in half. Uh, and so the half-life, this term, 
continues to go down. So every half-life, the, uh, um, the half-life gets shorter. Over here in this one, every success, uh, successive half-life, this number goes down, causing that number to go up, because that's in the denominator over here. So I just want to mention that. I know this, that's very math sounding. Um, and then I, you know, the term half-life comes up a lot. And if you don't really have a good handle on what that means, uh, it, that's going to get you. Wait, but those equations are right, right? The equations are correct. Uh, you should write them down. If I uh, am going to be honest with you, I've told you before that I'm not good at memorizing things. And I was walking in this morning realizing, I think this is my fifth time teaching this class. And I still don't have the half-life formulas memorized. I don't, if you held a gun to my head and said, uh, in five seconds you have to tell me the half-life for a zero order reaction, uh, you'd have to shoot me. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you, because I don't have it memorized. So I, because I know I don't have a good memory, and I'm kind of an airhead as far as memory goes, I would rather try to be resource, resourceful to figure things out. So I just remember what the integrated rate law equations are. I can remember those and I figure them out. I derive them just like you did. Rather than, I mean, if I have to memorize that, that, and that, you got A's on top sometimes, on the bottom sometimes, and sometimes there's a two there, ugh. I, I don't want to do that. Many of you I know are good at memorizing, and you're just going to memorize the half-life. I have no problem at all with that. You do need to know these equations. Don't be afraid, though, to know how to figure them out in case you start to get nervous on your test and your mind starts going wacko. You ever have that happen? Yeah, like every test maybe? Some people, they just lose their brain in, uh, during tests. They know the material and then they get nervous. Um, so yeah, be comfortable figuring things out and driving. Yeah. Would you ever um, <coughs> do like uh, half life rate using the differentiator? No, we only use half life with integrator. <coughs> that was it? Yeah. Okay. All right, now I'm down to not much time left. Um, I want to remind you, I know that you wrote this down the other day. The order of the uh, reactants tells how the reactant concentration affects how fast the reaction goes. Uh, I would like to do a couple of examples with you. I have a handout, and don't get mad at me for giving you these. You say, oh my gosh, I, I don't need more homework. This is not homework, it's just in class examples. Oh, don't let this bother you. We're just going to use these as examples. Now, I want you to look at number one. Number one is the first one we'll do. Notice this reaction has two reactants, and it shows what the chemical equation is for the reaction. Number one, you got mercury chloride, and then you got that C2O4 negative 2 ion. What's the name of C2O4 negative 2? Oxalate, right. Okay, so uh, notice what the, uh, the problem has in it. It tells you the chemical equation. It gives you some experimental data. How many trials of this reaction were run? Four. Four. Four trials. And what did they do in the trials? Were they all the same? What was done? Concentrations got varied, didn't they? Yeah. They were varying the concentration, and then as a result of varying the concentration, the rate changes. This is the typical kind of data that you're going to be given to you for uh, differential rate law problems. You're going to be given concentration versus rate. So um, for the integrated rate law, you have concentration versus time. That's why I got that T term in there. For differential rate law, it's concentration versus rate. So the two different rate laws are used depending on what information you're given in the problem. This might be a good thing to write down. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at 